I started to make photographs. I began with family, people I knew, people who were close to me. Before I ventured out to make portraits and to get invited to weddings or to birthday parties and that kind of work. After studying at International Center of Photography, when I came back, I couldn't photograph because Brian Wilde says to me, May, this is my teacher. And I put up my pictures, which I was actually very proud of because they, that's the work that made me get the scholarship. I put it up on the wall and he looks at it and he says, Santu, what do you think this is? Do you think this is an exhibition? If you open any mag good magazine, anytime, you'll find pictures like the ones you're showing me. And now let's do photography. He made me think differently about images and image making. So much so that it became difficult after I came back in 92 to make a picture. In 92 I come back and what do I do? I concentrate on my research. I went into photography, doing documentary, recording what life was like under apartheid. The story at the time was Amigari fighting apartheid was about the struggle against oppression and repression. Having joined Afropix, uh, Photographers Collective, I worked with them for a while and before joining an alternative newspaper called The New Nation, where I was employed as a photographer and I know, I mean, if I was covering a story, I make this a kind of joke that if I had a photograph of a policeman, it was a good photograph. Maybe two, that's better. And if three, that's front page. That was the story at the time that was published in the paper. I found it unsatisfactory as a reflection of life as I know it in the township. If I took back the work that I thought was good, back to the township and say, this is the picture I made of you. I discover people were not comfortable with the reality I was presenting about their lives out there in the world. What needs to be understood, I had no formal training in photography. So it was by looking and which informed what I was doing. And in time, realizing that having done an exhibition like Shifting Sand about life in the township, life in the rural areas, and life in places where newspapers don't normally go. The exhibition was well received, but someone probably from the townships like me commented, making money with blacks. When that comment came to me to say, oh, I'm making money with blacks, oh, I said, no, 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 I need to engage, I need to make the people in the communities in the township to participate in what I'm doing. One way was the exhibition Distorting Mirror, Townships Imagined, whereby I contrast the images that I made, which I published in the paper, and pictures that people actually keep for themselves. The project, the Black Photo Album, which was a kind of research, looking at all photographs, copying them and give them as much context about who the person is, what kind of life, when, 
the research became an installation. The research into family histories became the Black Ford album when it was shown at the beginning as a kind of installation of slides. My object was to give attention, I mean to get people to know what kind of research and to try and get more money to support that this research. But <laughs> in the end it became an art installation. It was so popular that it was beginning to eclipse my own photography. Sometimes people confuse the images that are found and copied as if I made those images, except that I, my contribution to the work was the research. Becoming an artist is a decision I make after 94. Yeah, after 94, a South African artist previously from college, with college education, who had the privilege and I mean, they were the ones who were invited in exhibitions and they could take advantage of this space to travel and to speak about the reality of South Africa and I felt no, 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 my voice has to be heard also. Chasing Shadows comes at a time where, when in South Africa White people never supported apartheid. They never voted for apartheid. You can never find anyone who's voted for apartheid. And then black people were fighting apartheid. Even policemen were fighting apartheid. And you just wonder, why did the thing last for so long? In English, Chasing shadows means a silly game, whereas yeah. in the vernacular, Sutu translation, it's siriti. Whereas in vernacular, siriti is not absence of light. Siriti has to do with dignity, aura, presence, being loved, feeling lucky, and people spend a lot of time trying to access serenity, or chasing shadow. It's a play on words in English, but basically chasing shadows is about acquiring a very strong, potent aura. I mean, there's no such a thing as a climate change picture, and there's no such a thing I mean, such as to say I'm going to photograph spirituality. What I can do is I can suggest, I can give you the feeling of being in a spiritual landscape. And when, whenever we speak of climate change, it's very easy to find a dry river, which is not perennial to say, this is climate, this is drying, this is, which I find that kind of approach very limiting because climate will always change. We know that, we accept it. There's an image over there where dust seems to be raining from the sky and coming down. This is almost turning things upside down because you are at a beach, you are thinking of blue skies, you are thinking of a walk on the beach and what do you have? You have sand coming from the sky raining on you. In one way I'm saying for sure I'm like, this is what we are afraid of. If you speak to my enter enterprise or my approach, it's more or less an ongoing conversation which is internal, how I look at things or look at life and at different times. Maybe this is how I saw something. That was my opinion at this time and I go back to it. And then with more understanding or different perspectives, I look at it and then I find that 
the meanings have shifted, or I see it differently, or I miss something. 